So this cryptid actually freaked me out so much that I'm making a video about it. And I haven't made a video in two years. There's no shortage of information about the Dogman. Widely in thanks to the author Linda Godfrey, who um, compiled a bunch of stories about the Dogman and is kind of like the the unofficial Dogman bookkeeper. A quick description of the Dogman before we get into some of the encounters, which is what freaked me out, frankly. Um, it has a dog-like head with a fairly human body, uh, but still kind of furry, but it has hands, long, powerful limbs. It can walk on two legs or on four, really just whatever it picks. Um, and it's super duper fast. It's been seen in a wide variety of colors, black, brown, white, you name it. So these encounters that I'm going to talk about um, aren't my own, thank goodness. Uh, but you can listen to them on the Sasquatch Chronicles, where I actually first heard about them was a spooky sode with Waba. I'm not gonna say their whole name because of YouTube, but I will put up the episodes in the bio for the Waba spooky sode and the three episodes that they referenced, which I highly suggest to listen to. It is so chilling to listen to these first-hand accounts. The first one I'm going to talk about is from Linda. Uh, this is of the first time that she had seen it face-to-face, -face, but it had been on her property quite a few times before, and it was just reaping, wreaking havoc. Uh, it was killing her cats, it was killing her dogs, and it wasn't killing them for food. It was killing them for fun and sport. They're just, they were just torn up, not eaten at all. Sometimes they were stuffed under things like cars or even the house a little bit. One day she got so fed up and she decided that the next time she like heard this thing running around, she was going to unalive it, which completely valid. Um, when she had made the official decision that she wasn't dealing with this anymore, it, uh, it started going from tapping on her son's window, which was almost a nightly occurrence, and it escalated to scratching on the windows, just completely raking its fingernails down it, which I hate. Because I doubt, I don't know if she verbally said that she was going to kill it, but somehow it knew. So one night she heard one of her dogs getting killed in the driveway, and naturally she grabbed her gun. It was a big gun. Uh, I think it was an AK. And she went out to kill it. As she stepped outside, she watched a massive mass of just dark run behind a semi-truck that was parked in her driveway. And she was just super pissed. And she followed a trail of blood with the flashlight. And like, of course she was pissed this thing was killing her dog. So she followed the trail of blood with her flashlight. And she ran it up the corner of the semi. Super cinematic. So scary. I'm sure you can hear the tremor in my voice right now. And around the corner of the semi-truck, there was a big clawed hand wrapped around the side of the trailer. By her own words, she thought it was a devil. It felt like a devil. And she cocked her gun, just ready to shoot, ready to end this thing. 
and as she cocked her gun, she froze. She just couldn't move. She was terrified. And it looked around the trailer, and she could see its face. And it looked like it was grinning at her. Too scared to do much of anything, and definitely too scared to turn her back. She picked up her dog, and she couldn't pick him up very well because she needed one hand on that gun. And she she got herself and her dog back to the porch, back inside. And that was that for that night. Uh, she says that sometimes you can still tell when the dog man is around because there won't be any animals. They have a lot of corn around there, and so it's pretty normal to see deer just munching on some of that corn, but when the dog man is around, you won't see any. You won't see any rabbits, you won't see any birds. Something, they know that something is wrong. This next story is from Shane, and this one's a bit longer, so I'm going to paraphrase a little bit more. Uh, I'm sure the delivery won't be quite as intimidating as it was hearing it from him. But when he was just a kid, he went out for a run. He lived out in the country, the sort of place where there are tons of crops, tons of corn, just farmland everywhere. About a mile away from home, he looked across a field of corn, and he saw corn moving, and something told him that it was not something safe to be around. It wasn't like a dog or a deer, um, and it couldn't be a person, because this was super late out night, and what would someone be doing in a cornfield in the middle of nowhere in the middle of the night? So he took off running, and what was ever was in the corn ran with him. Just a couple of rows of corn in, it was keeping perfect pace. And he stopped for a minute to try and see if he could see it, and it stopped with him. Uh, he was fueled with adrenaline at this point, so he took off again. And, big surprise, so did whatever was in the corn. He was just frantically thinking of a way that he could get away from this thing, and he did think about scaling a tree that he knew was farther down the road. Just any way to get away from this thing. But once he had reached the tree, he found that someone had cut all of the small, short branches off of it, so it wasn't climbable anymore. And at this point, the thing was still keeping up with him. It they still knew where each other was. Um, he figured he couldn't outrun it, and his path home would end up intercepting with whatever was in the corn. Uh, but if he turned the opposite way, he could get to his friend's house after crossing over the highway. And he was told never stay away from the highway because people people are going fast down it. There's not going to be a way for them to stop or anything. So he got to the highway and there was just a patch where the corn disappeared and it turned into the highway and he realized that he would see this uh, as he crossed the highway. And he managed to get a, through the highway, but he turned back and he saw what he could only describe as a monster that looked like Anubis. Um, and he was still absolutely terrified. He ended up jumping the fence to his friend's place and landing into the pool. And he pushed all the air out of his lungs so that he would sink. And what felt like five minutes, but was probably much shorter than that. He, he was just scared that it would be waiting for him at the end of the pool when he came back up for air. But he came back up, and it wasn't there. So, just sopping wet, he 
he crawls out of the pool and bursts into his friend's home. Something about the dog man is just chilling to me because all of the encounters that I've heard, it's playing with people. It it doesn't seem to ever kill them, it it just toys with them. And it has some sort of intelligence to it that you can see when with the grinning around the edge of the semi and keeping pace with someone. He doesn't seem to want to hurt, he just wants to terrify. And I can't say I particularly like the intelligence and the maliciousness that comes with this creature. Uh, that being said, I don't know what I would do if I came face to face with a dog man, but I do have some advice. Please do not pet the doggo. Thank you all for watching. All of my socials that I kind of maybe sort of post on are right up here. And I also have a Ko-Fi if you kind of sort of like my art style and want to commission something from me. That's going to be it for today. Keep it spooky. Mad Witch out.